today I'm cooking a really gorgeous pork butt and we're going to pull this so it's gorgeous and shredded and stunning Ian. Okay, so this is a five and a half kilo uh, Boston butt or pork butt and this is a bone-in one. So it's a bone-in, which is a really helpful thing because that helps it cook and also at the end, we'll be able to pull that bone out with no effort and that'll show you this is perfectly cooked. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is take this fat cap off. Now, technically, you could leave it on, but you're gonna have a lot of fat that renders out of this and personally I would much rather apply my seasoning to the actual pork butt itself, to the actual meat and all that fat you're just going to get rid of, you're going to take out, nobody wants to eat, it's just not nice so you could technically do this at the end and it'd probably just pull off but I just feel it's a much better uh, product at the end if you take off this fat cat now you can start from one side and cut it this way and, and go this way but what I found is that where the muscles if I move if you're not careful you can go that way or oh, particularly this one so if you're not careful you can actually start cutting out meat that you want to keep so I tend to go in the middle just gently score in until I get to that bit of meat and then I know my depth, I know where I'm going to start going and I can just gently start to peel this back and you can see I'm just going to follow that fat seam down just running my blade along that bit of fat and then just carry that on and you can see there so we're starting to get into the meat bit already so here Try and be as careful as possible. So effectively what we're doing is using that skin and the fat that's underneath it to guide the blade down so that we take off as much fat as possible whilst leaving as much meat as possible. So let's cut back to this once I've pretty much got to the end of this bit. So here you just gotta be a bit careful and I'll turn around so you can see. Just gotta be a bit careful and follow that fat seam along here and then follow that across okay so do not chuck away this bit of fat what we're actually going to do is stick this in the tray in the smoker and we're going to render this down so you're going to get a load of uh, pork tallow to come out of this and then if you cook a ribs or anything like that and you want to add some fat back into it you can utilize this so do not throw it away this is really good stuff okay so that one is pretty much as far as i am going to take it now okay so that is pretty much good to go do a bit here and there but nothing major to be quite honest so what i'm going to do is flip round and then do that other side and then we'll come back to seasoning okay so that's trimmed up both sides also flipped over the other side as well and there's a couple of bits of fat here there's a little bit there that we're just really quite thick and weren't going to render down particularly well so I've taken those off and then any other scraggly bits that I don't think are going to go particularly well so now it's time to season this up so I'm using French's yellow mustard and this is a bit of a tradition when it comes to pork and I think it adds such a great flavour to this so we're going to give it a liberal slavering um, this is going to get messy there's no two ways about it but try and keep one hand free if you can so I'm using killer hogs I'm using the barbecue rubs this is Malcolm Reed's rub and it's one of my favorite the flavor the color this but this rub adds is fantastic I'm gonna give this a really heavy coat so this is a big piece of meat obviously you're only getting the seasoning on the outside so we want to try and get as much on there as possible I'm gonna flip this over and same process I mean, look at that you probably just eat his ears wouldn't you what's the point of smoking there let's just <laughs> chow into it so we're going to give that a good half hour we want to make sure that rub is really nice as it did 
and we make sure that that salt is starting to do its job and start to draw out that moisture. So let's put that to one side and put the smoke on. Okay, so this is at about half an hour. You can see there's a couple of bits where it's a little bit thicker, the seasoning, it hasn't quite did, but the majority of it has did really, really nicely. So let's take a couple of meter probes. So being careful to avoid the bone. Let me see where it is. I'll turn it around so I can zip. Okay, so you don't want to put a meter probe next to your bone because that will give you a false reading. The bone heats up very quicker and that's one of the things that help cook the meat, but it will give you a false reading. So what we're going to do is that we'll go for one here, that one there, and we'll put it in there. Okay, time to put this on the smoker. Okay, because this is such a long cook, I've actually crammed the hopper full of pellets just to make sure it doesn't run out. But today we're using cooking pellets and we're using the 100% oak. And these pellets are such good quality. You can see by the size and length that they've got really good compression. And these burn really, really nicely and produce an absolutely gorgeous smoke. So I'll leave the link in the description below. Please go check them out. Okay, so we put everything in the ironwood, this is in the 885, and as you can see there I've got the pork butt, I've got the pork fat which we took off earlier, that's in the tray at the back, and then I've also got a um, pan of hot water, and that's basically just to add a bit of moisture into the cook chamber and help that smoke stick to the pork butt. So, let's put close this down now and we'll check back in a bit. Well welcome back, it's morning time and as you can see this has been on for just over 6 hours, it's about 6.30 in the morning um, and it's time to check on these and see how they're doing but before then let's have a quick look at the pellets and as you can see they burnt down, still loads left, um, the Traeger pulls them from the left hand side so you do have to move them over but it's not really a problem, you just got to keep an eye on it. Okay it's time to have a look at these, wow would you look at the bark on that. That looks absolutely incredible. Right, time to tempt these to see what they're doing. So, oh, it's always how <laughs> do it, get it on centigrade. Right, so that's running at 148, which is pretty good. It's pretty much where we want it for the amount of time it's been on, 137 there. And one thing I really like about this ink buzz is that if you press that button, take it away, you can read that nice and easily. You don't have to try and squint or if you're at a weird angle, and that works really well. And just touch it again, and that'll switch it back. And then let's just double check over here, 152. Okay, perfect. So that's really, it's a really good place. I'm really happy with that. Okay, so next what we need to do is bump the temperature up. So I've been running at 225 and we've had the super smoke on, but now it's time to put it up to 275 so we can get it to that 170, 175 temperature that we're looking at so we can then take it out and wrap it. Okay, so the meter probes have just gone off and they're telling me that this is about 170. I've just probed it with my ink bird and it's coming up at 175, 170. So that's pretty perfect. The bark is looking incredible. This looks absolutely gorgeous. You don't actually have to wrap at all if you don't want to. Um, I just find that it just helps me get to the end cook. We're going to 203 internal again on this, so it just help, find it helps me get to that stage a lot quicker. Also, we're going to put some additional rub, some butter and some sugar on it as well, and that will help create that um, start the base of when you start shredding the pork. You start mixing all that juice and everything that's come out of the pork and you get to keep it in this tin foil so it's nice and convenient and it also keeps your pit a little bit cleaner as well. So let's grab it and I'll take you through those next steps. So you can see the bark on this is looking stunning. And where we took all of that fat off last night, you can see we are got pure bark on the actual meat here. And this is, the smell is incredible. But let's, let's crack on without, <laughs> I'll just chat, that's my problem. Right, okay, so we've got it in a full um, tray. We're gonna get some butter, and I'm probably using maybe 100 grams of butter, but it's obviously depending on the size of your pork butt. And even though I pre-cut it, you don't want to play ball, as always. So it doesn't really matter where you put it, but you're just looking to some pats of butter, just generally all over it. When it comes to barbecue, butter is, is your friend so you're adding fat and also a bit of flavor back into it as well I mean this 
let's not go wrong this pork bite is going to be incredible there's no two ways about it so next thing I'm going to do is I've got some more barbecue rub and I'm going to just give it another good blast of that so I am going heavy I mean ultimately this is a big piece of meat so and remembering that you are just seasoning the outside so put it in the tray as well because obviously we're going to mix it up later when we shred it so that's going to give that extra bit of pep right and then the final stage we're going to do is get some brown sugar and I'm just going to add in because we are going to go with a sweet profile on this so when we do it later when we do shred it I am going to be adding or going for the sweet, sweeter profile next we're going to tint, tint it with some tinfoil remember to keep the shiny sides down so that's reflecting the heat back under Okay, let's put that back on the smoker and we'll take that up to 203. Okay, so we're going to carry on rolling at 275. These are only going to do a couple more hours and then be ready to come off. Remember, whenever you want to, um, you're cooking something like this, you have to build in rest time. So I'm looking to serve this at 2 p.m. today. It's now like about half eight now. Um, so a couple of hours means half ten. So it means I've got a good three and a half hours before I need to serve this and that will be perfect for this. Right, catch you back in a little bit. So one problem I've noticed with the meter block is that as soon as you wrap something in tinfoil, it literally cuts out the signal. Even though they're right next to each other, it just cuts out the signal. So what I'm gonna do is insert a Prager probe into the top. Oh, just got the <laughs> into the top of the pool but and that way it just allowed me to monitor see what's going on in that tin pool. right so we got there so I took this to internal temperature about 205 and it's been sitting in the cooler for three hours and as you can see that looks incredible the bark on that and the smell that come out that is incredible but it's time to pull this the first thing I'm gonna do is take that bone out I mean look at that that bone is clean that just shows that this is perfectly cooked. So the first thing we need to do is just take off the larger chunks of pork and we're just gonna roughly break these up into a separate uh, full pan. Um, once you've shredded all the pork off, then what you need to do is come back with a knife and just cut through the larger strands. You don't want any big long strands of pork. Next, you need to pour the um, juices that we collected in the pan when we smoked it. This stuff is like absolute nectar, you do not want to lose this. And then the final step is that you just get your favourite barbecue sauce. This is Meat Mitch and basically put a really generous helping all over it. And then we're going to mix that finally through and that's it, we're ready to eat. Now please uh, check out my videos, here's one to a surf and turf that I did. But thanks very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.